What's up everyone, Super Nerd Daniel coming at you with more Pokemon Violet. In the last episode, we did a whole lot of exploring after taking our midterms at Uva Academy, and we made our way here to Cassowaria Lake where we are set to take on the final Titan Pokemon, the False Dragon Titan, whatever the hell that is. So, uh, yeah, that's gonna be something. I have no idea how strong it's gonna be or if I am prepared for this at all. I guess we'll find out. There's a Gimme Ghoul, yoink. But speaking of which, uh, wait a second, hold that thought, hold that thought right there. If you remember from uh, several episodes ago, we found these, or found one of these rather, behind a building in one of the towns. There's an ominous black stake driven into the ground. Will you pull out the stake? Of course. I have no idea what this is all leading to. I have a theory, though. This is obviously all rhetorical, by the way. Um, don't, like, spoil it for me if you actually know. Um, but my theory is, uh, because if you look at, like, the little ornament that's on the handle of the stakes every time I pull one of them out, and I'll grab this TM real quick, but if you look at the little ornament that's on the end of the stake every time you pull one of them out, ooh, nice solar beam, uh, it looks pretty similar to the pattern on that one door that we found in like i, I want to say episode two that had a like weird ominous energy to it but we couldn't really do anything with i'm assuming these stakes have something to do with that and that it will involve that in some way like maybe pulling all the stakes out of the ground will unlock that door question mark i don't know that's either here nor there right now i need to focus on the fact that i am fighting this dragon titan or that I'm meant to be anyway. Oh, we got some Tatsugiri hanging around here. Don't want to fall for their tricks. I may have to, though, because I have no idea what in the world else I'm supposed to do. Because if you remember from, like, all the Pokedex entries from when I was catching on the Tatsugiri in the previous episode, uh, it was all about, hey... Uh, they like to play dead or play coy and, like, lure people in and then they attack and shit, so, you know. I don't know if this has anything to do with the Titan fight. If it's gonna be, like, a gigantic Tatsugiri or something. Or maybe if it has something to do with this dude. Guess we'll see. You sure put in some effort coming all the way out here on your own little legs. I mean, I did have Maridon's help, to be fair. You know what? I can use a warm up anyway. Ooh, I say that as you bring out a Kaparaja. Wait, what's the level on this? 54? Alright, that's about where I'm at. That's fine. But yeah, kind of my question of the day, real quick, as long as I'm doing this. Um, obviously, because we are presumably coming up on the end of the um, Path of Legends storyline with the final Titan Pokemon. Again, presumably. I don't know for sure. But there's not going to be some big twist. Which was your favorite Titan to fight? Obviously, I can't answer that myself yet because I don't know what the false dragon is, so I can't really take that into account. But, uh, yeah, let me know in the comments below. Thus far, the only thing I seem to be seeing that is of any interest, because uh, fighting the cabby led to nothing. only thing I'm seeing is that there's just a bunch of Tatsugiri around here. They're all making different cries. I have no earthly idea if I'm supposed to find like a standout or maybe just fight all of them or something. Hmm. I don't know, maybe I'll start just picking some of these off and... Oh, that's a big one. Up. Uh, yeah, it's cry kind of sound like Titan. Yep, okay. Okay, that's the trick. Ooh, baby! Okay, so apparently the final Titan is a gigantic Dundozo. Right. Okay. Sure. Obviously, let's start off with the glare. Get the paralysis off. And remember, if this goes like all the other Titan fights, this is only the first of two times... We have to fight this thing, so that's fun. 
Alright, Tsuchinoko, you did your job. Get on the bench. Artemis, handle it! Goes Body Slam. We'll get to Gauge and Strength. Oop. That did about 60. 60 ish. Let's go for the Flower Trick. Ooh, a little over half. Thank God this move always crits. Alright, I should be alright if I just go for the Flower Trick again. I will probably have to heal Artemis right at the start of round two. Oh, wait. Oh, wait, that's right. I don't actually get to knock it out the first time. That's right, I remember now. That's how this goes. I've only done this four other times. Jeez. All right, where are you, you big bastard? Yep, yeah, that's a gold duck. I presume I would have to find somewhere that looks like it would be some sort of sanctuary. Ooh, that's some bergmite. Do I have a Gumi yet? I don't think I have a Gumi yet. Alright, slight detour from the Titan. Because, oh, I accidentally hit the Sligu. Sligu, the soft tissue Pokemon. When Sligu senses danger, the mucus coating its entire body becomes more concentrated. It'll dissolve anything. Right, so uh, maybe let's go for what I was going for in the first place and get myself a Gumi as well. There we go. Gumi, the soft tissue Pokemon. Gumi's horns are excellent sensory organs that cover all five of Gumi's senses. Gumi picks up on danger from the movement of the air. Okay, I think that's enough of a detour. We need to get back on this hunt for the big old catfish. There we go. Hey, Arvin, nice of you to show up. So that's it? Sure is one big, uh, dragon? Wait, is it even a dragon? Or is it a fish? I, I was telling the dragon tamer this in the last episode. Like, it's very obviously not a dragon. It's called the false dragon titan, guys. Like, if you just fucking eat the tattoo Giri, the, the, the little sushi guy got eaten up by the titan? Yeah, that's what I said. Unless the tattoo Giri had already eaten the Urban Mystica, so he had to eat the tattoo Giri in order to get the power up. I guess. Alright. Fuck it. Let's go. Glare. This is no time to question the food chain. We gotta freaking fight this Titan Pokemon. It's fine. It's the horrific beauty of nature in action. Oh boy. Nice. Get the tail whip. That'll make the eventual flower trick I pull off with Artemis all the more powerful. Which is going to be in uh, just a few moments here. Oh, there's the order up. Yeah, I don't remember if that has a secondary effect or not. Ow. Alright, should be fine. Uh, flower trick, let's go. Mmm, nice big hit, Artemis. Yeah, this should absolutely just go down next turn. Yep, and the paralysis kicks in too. Awesome. We are good. Especially with another tail whip. Thank you, Arvin. Appreciate ya. And goodbye. Hell yeah. We, we did it, Daniel! Now that the Titan's taken care of, next up on the menu is that Herba Mystica! 
Hell yeah, I gotta get that last bit of Urban Mystica from a boss diff. Oh. Excuse me? <laughs> now they have to fight a beefed up Tatsugiri. Like I said, like Don Dozo's, um, friggin' Pokedex entry does say that Tatsugiri is really the boss. <laughs> Uh, you know what, Tsuchinoko? Let's just fucking get you hyper drilling this thing. I can't imagine, even with the buff from the Urban Mystica, this thing will be very tough. I say as a hyper drill barely did like a fifth. I better stop screwing around. I just need to get Artemis back out here. Wow, I cannot believe they pulled the twofer on us. It's always really awesome when, you know, you learn about stuff in the Pokedex and then you actually get to see it in action like this within the actual game. Can I say some other variant of actual one more time in a sentence? Jeez, how many times in a row was that? Honestly, one flower trick should just completely annihilate you, I feel like. Ooh. Right. Getting the speed drops like crazy. It shouldn't matter, though. How the hell? Okay, this should be fine. Okay, yep, yeah, Arvin got the kill shot. It's fine. It's totally fine. Jeez, though. There we go. Good job, Artemis. Also, shout out to Suchinoko. Oh, baby, here we go. Fifth and final piece of the Herba Mystica. The last Herba Mystica! Spicy. Get that away from Mr. Saguaro. Okay, let's see what the book has to say. So it seems spicy or is supposed to boost your metabolism. It gives your circulation a boost and helps flush out all those toxins, along with a ton of sweat. You know what's next. It's chow time! Hell yeah, let's get going. Make us some buffalo chicken sandwiches. And here we go! Trusty Arvin's chock-a-block full of cheer final herb super sandwich! That name's kind of a mouthful, you might want to workshop that. Squeeze this badge tight and cry beautiful tears of friendship as you eat, okay? That I could certainly do. Oh wow. <laughs> Too hot to handle. Oh, that actually begs the question also, what kind of power are we going to get for uh, Maridon with this final sandwich? Of course. Like, I'm sure if you say no, it's just one of those things where it basically, like, you know, just keeps you in a loop until you do it. Because, like, who's not going to give Maridon the sandwich, especially after you, uh, especially after you discover that you get powers from it? Hey, wall climbs! Let's fucking go. We're basically Genji now. Well, I guess Genji, Hanzo, and Kiriko. Because they all have the wall climb, but anyway. I guess it's Mabossif's turn then. Yeah, hopefully this does something for him. Poor little dude. Come on, bud. Eat up. It's going to make you all better, I promise. Daniel and I, we really did our best to get this for you. We're going to play with your favorite ball as much as you want. You know, just like we used to. Aw. Please, get better. That's all I want, really. Oh, full-fledged cutscene now. You did your best, bud. Oh. 
Oh, hey, he's up and about. Aww. Holy shit, I think it actually worked. <laughs> 10 out of 10. Best game. Best game ever. Everybody shut up. This is the best game ever. I love that. That, is, that was so worth it. That was so worth it. Oh, hello, Professor Turo. Hello, Daniel. This is Turo. What? It seems that Marion has regained all of its powers, except for the power to battle. It should now be able to climb up any vertical surfaces it grabs onto while you're riding upon it. Alright, so press B to jump while facing a wall. And then move by using the left stick, and then let go with the B button again. Got it. I knew you were the right one to entrust it to, Daniel. Puh, listen to you. Like you had anything to do with it. Yep, true. Turo, you had no part of this at all. That voice. Arvin, are you there? I've been searching so long for a way to reach you. Because... Because no one else can get into my lab but you. Excuse me? Yeah, excuse you? What? Please take Daniel back to the lighthouse with you. Oh, the lighthouse where we first met? Yeah, at Poco Path. All right. Right. You know, Turo, maybe there was a reason that Arvin didn't want to, like, stay in contact with you. I don't know what that reason is, obviously, but, you know... I'm partial to the side with Arvin here. I guess you probably already know, but that... That's my dad. Yep, I figured. Always buried under his work, off pursuing his own research, never at home with me. That's the first time I've even heard his voice in years, you know? And now what? The first thing I get to be is treated like some kind of errand boy? He's seriously unbelievable. But I'm guessing you and Maridon probably want to go, eh? Not gonna lie, I feel like my blood's boiling, but... Sure, fine. I'll get you into the lab. What else can I do? The lab is off Poco Path, at the lighthouse where you and me first met. Come on, let's get moving before I change my mind. Dad, where have you been all this time? I mean, he's been in Area Zero, presumably. Like, isn't that where his research is happening in the Great Paldean Crater? Pretty sure. Well, I guess Arvin wouldn't know that, perhaps. Um, let's test out this wall climb real quick. Yeah! Ah, that's sick. It's gonna make things so much easier to get up walls and stuff. Ah, that's cool. I love that. Up oh, they're not running to 700 wall Pokemon while I'm doing this. Okay. So, I could, in theory, I could just go to the Pokopath lab and just do the next part of that right now. Or, I could go to Uva Academy and do some more classes. Because, again... I assume I have been incredibly behind on that based on where I am in the game, so I think I'm gonna do that first. I'm sorry, Primeape evolves into what? 
The way Primeape evolves into Annihilate. Alright, so, uh, okay, so that's something I haven't seen yet that I'm gonna have to try and, you know, see at some point. Ah, uh, of course he's gonna withhold that information. You jerk. Also, you didn't miss a whole lot of interesting stuff in the math class, you just told us about stat buffs. I was hoping to continue unraveling the marvels that history has presented to us today. However, I imagine your ability to concentrate has been spectacularly derailed by my midterm. I suppose changing things up for fun and variety may be a good idea every now and then. So allow me to tell you an old fairy tale that has been passed down in Paldea for generations, oh? Once upon a time, there was a king who very much enjoyed collecting treasure. He was particularly fond of treasures from other countries. One day, a merchant from the east heard rumors of this king and came to meet him. The merchant laid out four treasures in front of the treasure-loving king. The four treasures were as follows. A vessel, a sword, a set of tablets, and a set of beads. Seeing such rarities before him, the king leaped for joy. He showered the merchant with gold coins and claimed all four of the treasures for himself. Oh boy. What do you think these tablets were? I have no idea. Wooden planks for writing on? A. Hey! These particular tablets were wooden and used as a writing medium in the East in ancient times. As you may know, they fell out of popular use as paper become more uni- uh, become... Uh, I think that was actually supposed to be became? Yeah, they fell out of popular use as paper be- yeah, it's supposed to be became there. Bit of a typo there. For the king to consider these paper substitutes treasures, they must have been of superb quality. So, the king obtained these four treasures, and on that very night, it is said that a terrible disaster rained down upon his castle, reducing it to rubble by dawn. Ooh. Oh, don't leave me on that, come on! Yeah, I may just do that. I need to see how that story ends. Leading up to the midterm, we learned all sorts of words from different regions. Starting today, though, I'll be ho Starting today... Starting... Jesus Christ. It's English, Daniel! How can you be struggling with this so much? Starting today, though, I'll be throwing a curveball. For we begin listening comprehension. Oh, no. Oh my goodness. Hey, cute little Pikachu. As you just heard, Pokemon can also use words to communicate. It's not always easy for us to understand them, but their words have meaning, just as ours do. Pokemon can use language to share all kinds of information with each other, like the location of food or whether there may be predators nearby. The same Pokemon's cries may sound different depending on what it wants to say. I'm sure you're all curious, so today, uh, let's learn some Pokemon language. I wasn't even going to attempt that. <laughs> Je te prie, if you would be so kind, Pikachu. That sounded like it would be happiness based on the expression. Oh, what? Whatever. Okay, that animation did not convey that. I'm sorry. No way. Yo, you're lucky you're cute, otherwise no way you'd be clapping. Have you all been using the R button? Yes, I have. Oh, I actually have Nightmare out with me. Nice. If you do, your Pokémon will run off in the direction you're facing. It's a super useful tactic that lets your Pokémon... Oh, this is supposed to just teach us about the, the Let's Go thing? And the auto battles? Yep. Alright, cool. Ooh, so they don't... Well, the not learning moves automatically thing I've seen from the auto battles, I also did not know that they wouldn't evolve automatically from an auto battle. How do I stop an auto battle? 
Right, so there's no stopping it. Right, so I can't stop it once it's started, but I could go you know, call a Pokemon back before it actually officially starts fighting. And I'm assuming there's also no way to catch a Pokemon in an auto battle. Oh, a special guest? Oh, hey, Brassius! I mean, I kind of assumed that from the nickname. I guess I was right. I am Brassius. I'm an artist, and I focus exclusively on grass-type Pokémon for my work. Brassius here mainly creates three-dimensional pieces, such as statues and the like. Yeah, which we saw when we were going around uh, Artisan. One of his major works is the installation titled Surrendering Sun Flora. Yep, which I've seen. I'm familiar. Yes, I do recognize some faces among your students. Like me, for example. I hope you all understand how fortunate you are to be able to attend Hass's classes. Oh, Hass is the man who saved me when I had lost all hope and given up on myself. Oh, really? That's some lore. Wonder what happened with Brassius that made him so lost where he had to kind of, you know, get somebody to pull him up from the depths. Ah, dear Brassy, I've got nothing against reminiscing about old times, but today I hope you will guide this class in, only a, in a way only you can. Of course. Let's see. Ah, why don't we discuss what Hass mentioned, surrendering Sunflora. Can anyone here tell me what my mood was when I... Oop. That, that seemed like a sad mood to me. Are you actually joking? When I made that sculpture, I had surrendered all hope. I was prepared to give up everything. I resolved to give up my life as an artist if that piece did not receive proper recognition. Hence the name Surrendering Sunflora. When I started as an artist, I experienced many hardships. I became deathly ill and fell into a slump that drove me into desperation. Ooh. Wow. Just made me think of the bold and brash bit from Spongebob. It was then that I met Hass. He helped me realize how petty I was being. I'll spare you the details, but in the end, I was able to leave all that behind. And that is also when I crafted the Sunflora. Remarkable. Even I did not know the full story until now. This kind of thing is hard to tell someone, especially when they are so close to you. Now, I don't doubt that you adolescents will often find your heads crowded with worries. My advice to you is simple. Be honest with yourself and do whatever your heart desires. So long as you don't cause trouble, that is. Legitimate good advice. That is all from me. I must admit I am beginning to feel a bit embarrassed, so I bid you farewell, Hass. And farewell to your pupils as well. Oh, Brassy, I can't believe it. Such a wonderful class. Thank you. Thank you so much! Ah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Just overcome with the emotion. The beauty of art! Though some of you had to retake the midterm exam multiple times, thankfully not me, I'm glad to say the majority of the class passed without issue. Alright, fine. Awesome. So tell me, Master Daniel, since you did quite well in your midterm exam... Oh, God. Don't put the pressure on me. Up. Uh, Arvin. Uh-huh. What should our... Uh, um, this young man due to increase the effectiveness of his meal powers. I'm calling him out. <laughs> I cannot disclose the identity of this certain male student who enjoys the culinary arts. It may very well be Arvin, but it may not be. But it totally is. To increase the effectiveness of meal powers, your sandwiches must be filled with many different ingredients. For a single person, this may prove difficult. But if you prepare a sandwich with others... Ah... 
so you can get a better sandwich making your sandwiches with other people. I see. Nice. <laughs> so you just ended up fucking outing him anyway. <laughs> God damn it, Mr. Saguaro. You are a mess. Yeah, don't pry too deeply into the name that I literally just said. Oh, boy. All right, let's check once again for interactions. Oh, we have a lot. There are quite a few, actually. Uh, I guess we start in the entrance hall because there's a couple, actually. And we'll go hassle first. Oh, why, hello there, young Daniel. I'm sorry, I was lost in thought and didn't notice your approach. I feel I must again apologize for what transpired in the schoolyard. Oh, with the, um, with the dragon's hammer? Didn't bother me any. Ha, huh, that is very magnanimous of you. That woman who showed up as a dragon tamer, and a relative of mine, I might add. You see, okay, so you definitely specialize in dragon types, I assume. Good to know for when I eventually challenge the Pokemon League. There was a child in our family who was expected to stand at its head and lead it to greatness. But the young lad, rebellious little fellow that he was, ran away from home one day. He made quite the show of it, too, swearing he'd make a living with music. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, he's talking about himself, I see. I thought that was like a reference to something else, but I couldn't really place it? After I so rudely took my leave during our last conversation, my dear relative encouraged me to give up teaching and return home at last. I've been told the current leader of my family, that is to say, my father, is in poor health. Oh? Oh, but I do apologize. Perhaps I am not cut out for teaching after all. What sort of teacher grumbles on and on at his own student? You're a great teacher, what are you talking about, man? I enjoy your classes. Ah, oh, my dear Daniel, you have no idea how much your words mean to me. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Hey, nice. All right, Miss Ryford, you got the end of the story for me? Yes. Heh, it is convenient that you would take the bait I presented in class, oh. A vessel, a sword, a set of tablets, and a set of beads. After obtaining these four treasures, the king's castle was destroyed. Why, you ask? Because the four treasures were actually four Pokemon. Ooh. As these Pokemon were passed from human hand to human hand as treasures, they slowly became tainted by hubris and greed. Finally, after coming in contact with the rapacity of the king at that time, is that the word? Rapacity? Yeah, it's probably rapacity. Uh, they awakened as disasters and began to rampage out of control. The king called for renowned Pokemon wielders to defend the country and, after a fierce battle, these incarnations of disaster were quelled. It is said that these four Pokemon were then sealed away somewhere in Paldea. Ooh! I wonder if it's not behind that door that I also assume those black stakes are associated with. So, what do you think? Would you say the story is just make-believe? No. I guarantee you there's truth to that. Heh, <laughs> very astute of you. I have read many historical disaster reports, personal journals, and the like. There's so much to support the truth of this story. If I am able to prove the story's veracity myself, I will be sure to let you know. Yeah, either that or I'll stumble on it myself at some point, like the main character that I am. I was about to say, where the heck is Miss Time? I was told she'd be in here. Daniel, you scared me! Were you cooking something? Oh no, I'm not here for anything food related at all. Aha. Uh -huh. I was just walking around the entrance hall, and I felt that intense gaze that I told you about before. So I quickly ducked into the cafeteria here. 
Our cafeteria has only one entrance, so I thought I might be able to discover the identity of the person watching me if they followed me in here. Ah, someone's come just now! Huh? That's weird. I thought I saw her come in here. I guess I won't be able to ask my question today either. That girl. I feel like I've seen her several times before. She seems to be a student here, but I get the feeling that her question is not about her studies. Next time I see her, maybe I'll go up to uh, maybe I'll maybe I'll go start up a conversation myself. It could have been a little scary being here on my own. I'm glad you were here with me. Hey, no problem. Oh, hey, Mr. Salvatore, hang out with Jacques? Oh, my dear Daniel! Thanks for your advice from before. Palm is... Well, just see for yourself. It seems very quiet? Hmm, yeah, it's feeling better, but this particular palmy may just be a bit meek, I suppose. It's true. I had Nurse Miriam take a look as well, and she says there's nothing wrong with it health-wise. So it shouldn't have any injuries, ailments, and the like. Could just have a quiet nature. Even so, it never utters so much as a cry, which is odd. Zatpot has even missed a Jacques here stumped. Aw, he's trying his best. I have some more information now thanks to the Academy security cameras, though. It seems Palmy was attacked by a wild Pokemon and fled here to the Academy grounds. Maybe it's still in a bit of shock. Yeah, that's possible. That's very possible, actually. Yup, if that's the case, there's absolutely no problem with keeping quiet. We could just attend there. Wait, that is, until it feels like talking. That's all we can do, really. Even if you could speak all sorts of languages, there's no guarantees that you can understand what's going on in someone's heart. True. But have no fear, I won't give up. No, I'll keep on trying until we figure each other out. That's the spirit. Hey, Mr. Saguaro, what's up? Hope you're not avoiding more spicy food peer pressure in here. There is something I would very much like to ask for your help with. What is it? Well, you see, I do not want anyone to overhear this, but... I heard rumors of an incredibly sweet condiment that exists somewhere in the Paldea region. I absolutely must experience that ambrosial sweetness for myself. You are the only one who knows of my insatiable sweet tooth. Thus, I have no one else I can turn to for help in this matter. I cannot go looking for this condiment myself, lest I destroy the image students have of me. I will repay you for your troubles, of course. Give it some thought if it piques your interest. Sure. I love me a good side quest. Yes, please do. It'll make it so much easier if I actually know what I'm looking for here. Oh, hey, Nurse Miriam hang out with Miss Dendra. Wonder what this is about. No way, no way, no way! Oh, God. Uh, again with a sandwich. I mean, just because we're already in the nurse's office doesn't mean you have to give someone a sandwich that could potentially put them in a hospital bed. Oh, boy. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was saying. You won't. Probably. Oh, boy. Uh, I still remember that sandwich you made me with meat filling and meat for bread. Ah, yes. The Meat Witch. A classic. I hadn't trained in the art of sandwich making yet back then. I was young and thoughtless and... Young and thoughtless? It was last month! Hey, it's been a whole month. That's passage of time. That should be enough. So, as you can see, I'm not getting anywhere trying to persuade her. Even after I went through that intensive sandwich making training, it kind of makes me sad. Aw. Yeah, she's putting in an effort. Yeah, she worked really hard at it. I was there. I bore witness. Trust me, I'm the main character. You probably won't die from this. Most likely. Oh, is it actually good? Hey, not bad! The solid C. It's a passing grade. We take those. Woohoo! My training paid off! 
I'm so glad my sandwich pleases the great nurse Miriam. I look up to you, you know. Oh? That's interesting because, you know, I believe, if I remember correctly, Nurse Miriam had said she wanted to be the physical education teacher, which is the job that Miss Dendra has. But it's interesting that Miss Dendra actually looks up to Miriam, who's the nurse. Huh. And she's rough again. That was weird. But that's just how Miss Dendra is, I guess. She's always coming into the nurse's office with some injury or another, too. Yeah, I imagine. Do people ship Dendra and Miriam? I imagine they do. Alright, we got some more spicy teacher lore, did the level 4 classes, so I think it is time we just head to Los Platos, go back to the Poco Path, and then see what's going on at the lab. Seriously, you beat me here? I mean, we were taking the classes together at the academy. It's not like you were in a rush. Well, this is the lab. I used to come here to play all the time when I was a kid. There better be a good reason for calling us here like this. Let's find out. Ooh, he's looking serious. Everyone always says he's some kind of genius. Absolutely brilliant as a Pokemon professor. My dad, that is. But let me tell you, as a parent, he's the worst. All he ever does is work. He never comes home. I don't have a single memory of him ever even playing with me. His own kid. My boss is the only one who was there for me. Always. It explains just how desperate he was to keep Mabosov well. Probably feels like Mabosov's his only real family. I suppose I have to lead the way as the main character and such. I really hope this isn't like some Undertale friggin' um, pacifist route stuff. Anyone who's played that game knows what I'm talking about. All you need to know is um, if you hear the words True Lab, you'll know what I'm getting at, and I'm hoping it's nothing like that. I need your help. Oh? Do you now? I am currently at the deepest point of Area Zero, in the Great Crater of Paldea. I have been researching the unique Pokémon here for a very long time. I am asking the two of you to lend a hand to help carry out the final step of the great Professor Turo's glorious research. The final step? But there is something we need first. Something that could be found within that lab. The Violet Book, which Arvin has. Wait, do you mean this book? Ah, so you took it from the lab, did you, Arvin? I mean, we also found a copy at the freaking school library. I feel like there was an easier way to get this. Oh, simply bring the book to Area Zero with all the freaking super dangerous Pokemon where people probably got killed at least once. I'm sure that'll be fine. I must know, however, that Area Zero is both home to vicious Pokemon and outfitted with powerful cybernetic security systems. It seems to me that you might struggle if the two of you were to enter alone. I mean, Arvin might, but I'm the main character, so... <laughs> oh? Reliable allies, perhaps, like... Hmm, who would that be? Maybe the Mona? Somebody else? I feel like that's something the Mona would come along with us for, you know? If we told her about it, that is. That place is bad news. It was down in Area Zero that my boss of... Oh! Ooh, I was wondering if there was going to be more to that actual story. In all honesty, I'd be perfectly happy to never see that place again. 
Understandable. Are you gonna go? Of course I'm gonna go. I've got plot armor, it's fine. I was gonna say, if you don't wanna go, if you still have a lot of weird feelings about it, I totally would understand. I would not hold it against you at all. You know, trauma is trauma. Hell yeah, let's do it together, man. Oh, hell yeah. That I gotta see. Oh. Yeah, I was about to say, I'm pretty sure I'm ready. It's, it's more you I think we need to worry about here. The May issue of Oculture. Iron Hands, secretly a cyborg? This being's name comes from the one given to an iron-handed entity in the Mysterious Violet book. It is said to have fists that move independent of its body and to be capable of throwing large, fast-moving vehicles. A leading theory holds that Iron Hands was once an athlete who became mortally wounded but was kept alive by being made into a cyborg. Why it so strongly resembles Hariyama, however, remains unanswered. Ooh. Let's take a look at the April issue. Iron Valiant, an experiment gone wrong? This oddity's name is borrowed from that of an object described in the Violet Book. One theory holds it is in fact a robot, the product of a mad scientist's efforts to create the most powerful psychic Pokemon of all. Yeah, because that's never gone wrong in the entire history of Pokemon. According to its few eyewitnesses, Iron Valiant appears similar to both Garibar and Gallade. Aha. Uh -huh. Perhaps a mix of the two? Question mark? Interesting. Right, so nothing comes up when I look at the panel. What about this? Oh, a mysterious device. Something I'll probably get to touch later, maybe. Who knows? Alright, let's go fight Arvin. Hell yeah, let's do it, dude. Oh, we get to see my boss up in action! I'm all about it. Huh? Oh. Let me give you a taste of what we can do. All right, bring it on, man. I've been ready. We're starting off with a Greedent. All right, how many Pokemon are you going to have, actually? Also, where are your levels? Oh, he's just going to have the Pokemon that... He's probably going to have five then, right? No, he has a full team of six. He's pushing level 60. Oh my god, we need the Toxic Spikes. Wait. 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 We need the Toxic Spikes right now. Oh my god. Oh my god. This may have been a massive error on my part. Oh no. We've got the two Toxic Spikes layers up. It's fine. Why are you all screaming? It's fine. Uh, thank you, Mud Skipper. You did your part. I'm sorry. Kind of to take one for the team, bud. Okay. Um, um, how do I deal with a Greedent? How do I deal with a Greedent? How do I deal with a Greedent? I feel like I bring out Nightmare. For the immunity of the normal stab. I know it has Earthquake. I know it has Earthquake. But I am hoping that if I Bitter Blade this... And also account for the fact that Earthquake is not Stab. That it should be fine. Uh, okay. I think I should be able to live another Earthquake with the Health Regen from Bitter Blade. Yep, I think... We're, as long as it doesn't crit. As long as the next Earthquake does not crit, we're fine. I feel like we're fine. Ooh! Oh, the Friendship Hacks! Uh, thank you, Nightmare. You're the best.
Well, I'm not going to get much of anything back from that, though. Because you were so low. Yeesh. This is going to be an ordeal. I have no earthly idea what that could be. Uh, let's stay in and then we'll heart switch based on what it looks like. Ooh, yeah, okay, that looks like a rock type. That oh my god, it's level 62. It's level 62, dude. I am not ready for this. I am not ready for this fucking battle. Oh my god. Jesus. This is not good for me. Okay, fucking... Uh, let's go for the lick, I guess. Just want to see if I can get the paralysis once. Nope, you just got body press, and there goes Hellhound. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, good. Rain. As if that does a lot to help me in any capacity. Also, did you even get poisoned? I wasn't paying attention. You didn't even get poisoned. Unbelievable. What the hell is your ability? Because I have toxic spikes up. You must have something to prevent you from freaking getting poisoned or... Maybe protect you from entry hazards? Which is more than a little annoying considering that's the primary thing of my strat. You know? There's the body press. Ooh, yeah. Super effective because I'm half dark. This is so not good. Okay, so I should probably just go fight the gym leader the next episode. Skull villain, okay. So, I think we bring in Nightmare, heal up, first of all. See what you're doing, and then we, uh, then we go in. Bearing in mind that there is rain right now, so both of our fire attacks are going to be lowered fairly significantly. Alright, there's the toxic. Jeez. Alright, go for the max potion. But yeah, next episode is most likely going to be a Gym Leader challenge. Oh god, you have crunch. Okay. Okay. You jerk. You know what? I think we switched to bonkers. Oh, please don't tell me you called that swap. Nope. Okay, good. Good God, man. Right. Max Potion to Nightmare. Oh, boy. Fire Blast. Okay, good thing it's raining. It didn't even matter. It literally didn't even matter. Oh, my fucking God. It didn't matter at all, man. What a joke. This is... So not good for me. <laughs> oh my god, this is so not good for me. Okay, I'm gonna go for the flame charge. So I can get the speed increase. Because I need to be faster than you. Okay, good. Now tell me there is something that is weak to fire coming out so I can bitter blade you and get some health back. That would be amazing. Toad's Cruel. Oh, God. That's gotta be the evolved form of Toad's, of, uh, Toad's Cruel, which means it's probably not gonna be susceptible to fire moves. Great! Ooh. God, it looks like the freaking um I think they're I think they're called bloopers from uh Mario. Like specifically, I'm kind of thinking of the big ones from uh I don't know what am I doing? I gotta heal freaking uh, Artemis before anything. Um I'm thinking of the big ones from like Mario Sunshine. I don't know, maybe just like the mouth reminds me most of it. Oh, spore, fuck off!
Right, so... Technically, all I have to do is outlive you, so... It should be alright. Oh, Power Whip! Alright, it's not doing much. It's not doing much. It's fine. This is so fine, actually. I can literally just sit here and spam some healing items for a bit. So, revive Hellhound. Alright, so I think I got four Restore Suchinoko. Because again, you're on a timer. Toxic Poison builds up. At eight turns, you're dead. So I just have to outlast you. So we didn't call this full restore. You're not going to spore me again. It should be alright. Yeah, there's the power rip again. That did a fair bit. Right, so I think what we do... Is we go ahead and we... Uh, Hyper Potion Hellhound. There's the power up again. Alright, next turn you die to the poison regardless. So I think we'll just use another Hyper on Tsuchinoko. And then Toad's Cruel goes down. Jeez. Oh, this is so not... Oh, Earth Power? Alright, fuck off. <laughs> Out of here. Cloister, okay. Uh, this seems doable. That being said, I want to bring out Hellhound to get the Intimidate off, because I feel like... Yo, just in case this is a physical cloister, I don't remember whether uh, cloister is more physical or special. I feel like it's more physical based on how people usually run it competitively. But just in case I have to bring out Artemis, I want to get off a scary face. Because this thing is level 59. Now, that being said, the boss div was faster than this. I'm like, yo, know, several levels below you, so I don't know what that says. And I've got a light screen up, which sucks for me. Except for the fact that I don't have any special attackers. So never mind. Which I just remembered. Literally the only special attack on my team in any way whatsoever. Is Tinkaton's fucking, um... Uh, what you call it? Um... Uh, d -d -d fucking, uh, Flash Cannon. And that's only because Tinkaton has an attack-lowering nature. Because that's what my luck was. Speaking of which, I think I'll revive her. I'm not a fan of the fact that you're getting the rain boost for that liquidation. Okay. Gotta say, though, um, absolute jam of a battle theme for Mr. Arvin here. Oh god, I don't have any really good healing items that aren't, like, bitter medicine. Alright, sorry, Hellhound. You'll thank me for this later. I assume so anyway. Ooh boy. Alright, one more turn and we're good. So I think we'll take this opportunity to energy root Suchinoko. Hang in there, Hellhound. Nice job. Right, there goes Cloyster. Seriously, I am so glad I've stuck with Mudskipper and stuck with the Toxic Spike strat. If it wasn't for that, I don't think I'd make it through half of these battles alive. Yep, here comes the Mavostiff. Okay. So we're gonna get Tsuchinoko out for the glare. Oh wait, no, I can't get the glare off. Okay, I'll just hyper drill. I was going for hyper drills. I was about to say, I can't get the freaking glare off because of the toxic spikes that are literally saving my ass right now. Now, do you have Intimidate? Yes, okay. At least it'll make you waste that on Tsuchinoko, so that's fine. This is your last Pokemon, 
So this should be alright. Oh god, you're gonna terrestrialize! What is that terrestrialization type? Is that dark? Ooh, I like that dark. I like that crystal. That looks kind of cool. Except it means we're gonna get a terrestrialized crunch. Ow! Oh, good. And my defense fell. Lovely. Wow. That's how much a hyper drill did, by the way. Okay. I need a clean switch into something. I need a clean switch, so Hellhound, you're gonna have to take one for the team here. So I can get the Intimidate off. And then maybe switch into Artemis for the kill. Oh god, you went play rough too! Ah, oh, jeez. I just gotta hope that Artemis is faster than you. That's what I'm banking on right now. Barring that, again, I just have to outlive the Toxic. Alright, let's go for the Flower Trick. I'm faster! I think I just win. I think I just win here. Okay, I don't just win there, but I think the Toxic Poison might be enough. I think the Toxic Poison would be enough. Alright, it's not enough, but I am faster than you, so assuming you don't have priority, I just win. I win! GG! Jesus H. Christ, though. I was not ready for this, dude. <laughs> oh, no. I was not ready for this. Yeah, area zero. Yeah, that's gonna wait, buddy. Oh, boy. Jeez. We were so close, Mabossif. So close. But, Daniel, thanks a little, buddy. Oh, at least I got 12 grand for that. That feels worth it. Dang, this is the strength of someone who could take down those Titan Pokemon, huh? Yeah, much as I hate to admit it, I do think we're going to need some more support. The Pokemon in Area Zero are super strong, and there are all sorts of weird machines there, too. I'd say we need at least two more people. Somebody with some champion rank level skills, probably Nimona, and somebody who could deal with crazy tech... I seem to recall Penny saying she was good with computers after one of our Team Star escapades. Yeah, so this is probably going to be the end result of all the storylines converging and then we all go to Area Zero together. I see. I mean, I think she likes me, so... But well, we've got to do what we've got to do. Whoever you think would be a help, just try getting in good with them. We'll see if we can't get a team together. Get in touch if you make progress. I'll do the same. Will do, bud. Hey! That's the completion of the Path of Legends. Nice. Wow. So we do know now that we're not going to get to Area Zero uh, before completing all three of the primary storylines. Good to know, actually. But, yeah, that's absolutely where we're ending off this episode. I've been recording for an hour and a half on my raw file. So this is probably going to take a while to edit, even if I cut out a lot of the class stuff, which I probably will. But, anyway, thank you for watching this episode of the Pokemon Violet. I really appreciate it. Leave a comment down below answering the comment question of the day, or maybe just berating me for getting into the Arvin fight too soon. I don't know. Uh, leave a like if you liked it. Share it around on all your favorite social medias. Ring the bell to get notified, all that good stuff. Take care of yourselves, drink some water, and just try to be there for your friends, you know? I'm sure they'd really appreciate it.